Welcome to tonight's edition of Podiatry Mythbusters. We're your hosts. I'm Dr. Raymond DeSecondo. And I'm Dr. Seymour Falanges. Here we are located in the Kill Ellis Room at TUSPM. On tonight's episode of Podiatry Mythbusters, we will analyze the effectiveness of the vacuum-assisted toenail debridement devices in our patient rooms. That's right. We calculated that there are about 18 rooms in this uh, area of TUSPM, and we think that only about half of the vacuums here will work. So we have 18 rooms total, 16 of which have vacuums actually plugged in. So two of those rooms don't have vacuums plugged in. If we use our formula, we'll try to calculate our theory and see if it's legit. Looks good. Let's get to work. To conduct this experiment, we first need a few supplies. We'll need the vacuum-assisted toenail debridement devices, the Dremel and Burr, and of course, toenail fungal dust. As we all know, fungal toenails are the bread and butter of podiatry. But fungal spores and aspergillus are nothing to mess with. I don't know about you, Seymour, but I prefer not to have fungal balls in my lungs and brain. That does not sound like fun. Now that we have our PPEs on, protective personal equipment, and we're going to test the effect efficacy of the vacuums. We have here on the table real 100% authentic fungal toenail dust. The moment that everyone's been waiting for, the moment of truth. <laughs> This may be effective if the toenail fungus is actually scooped and placed directly into the vacuum, but who knows, that might not even work either. Let's go check another room. Here we are in the second patient room. Before we start in this room, let's remember Dr. Herpin's pearls for nail care. Now remember, the patient doesn't actually matter. Step one, make sure the hose is plugged into the Dremel. Step two, make sure the vacuum is plugged into the outlet. That second step gets me every time. And finally, turn on the vacuum and use the device. Okay, let's test out Temple's lock on this vacuum. Here's some more 100% real toenail fungus dust. <laughs> I'm not feeling very confident about these vacuums. Yeah, me neither. That room didn't work either. I mean, I don't really know what we could be doing differently. Oh, look who it is, our very own Dr. Newman. Hold on, guys. Almost done with the chart. Uh, oh, these, these damn chairs here, you know. I don't know, these students all the time, they just put them down all the way. I don't know, I don't know these chairs. Okay, all right. Dr. Newman, if, if, if I could just get your signature and be on my merry way. Uh, my patient's been waiting for like three hours. Hold on, did you take the patient's blood pressure? Did you ask him if she has a colonoscopy? Sweetheart, did you have a colonoscopy? When was your last colonoscopy? Uh, Dr. Newman, uh, if I can just get your signature, please. What about a pap smear, huh? Sweetheart, have you had a pap smear before? When was your last pap smear? Uh, Dr. Newman, the, the patient is a male. Oh, oh, okay, all right. Yo, know, these, these, these damn computers here, I don't know why they're so... so, so. Rooms! Rooms! And now back here at the big board. We've gone through all the 18 rooms, tested all the vacuums, but we need help getting the results and analyzing them. So we brought in world-renowned statistician, Samuel Spadone. Sir, how are you? How are you guys today? How are you? Yeah. I'd just like to thank all of you for being here today. I'm happy to share these results with you guys today due to my lack 
a participation in the podiatric profession. So what we're going to do is talk about this formula that I basically live my life by and this will break down the results that we got from this experiment. So you have a pod plus nail debridement equals the absolute value of fungal respiratory aspergillus from an unknown device. And that basically sums up everything that we have found in our results. Conclusion. Presentation regarding the usage of the podiatric vacuum device in the Clayless Room yielded this profound positive predictive value. Well, there you have it, folks. I don't think we'd be able to put all that tricky data together if it wasn't for Dr. Spadone. Very true. And just like Sex Panther, I hear that 60% of the time, Dr. Spadone is right every time. Thanks for tuning in to Podiatry Mythbusters. Tune in next week when we determine if the number of times a patient's chart is called over the intercom has any effect on whether a fourth year will get up and actually get the patient. <laughs>